How's it going everybody? This is Trinx Productions here with another feature presentation as you can see on this uh, Boeing 737-800 on a crisp and cloudy day as I'm en route to see G-Man's boss in Fort Lauderdale as he's in college on the November 12th of 2019. Uh, we were a little bit delayed uh, departing from the gate due to a heavy snowstorm that was just reported to the west of the Appalachian Mountains that would soon uh, melt and would come into rain which was not shown on the radar as the uh, radar from the National Weather Service that was provided to the airports authority um, was inaccurate which caused a whole bunch of mayhem and a bunch of uh, stuff to uh, delay as you can see towards the west here towards the Appalachian and Blue Ridge Mountains you can see how the clouds are just Overlapping. I'm not going to lie, it was pretty turbulent when we were taking off on runway one right. Um, but luckily all the traffic cleared up and by the time we got down to uh, the end of the runway, we were number two for departure as we waited for a CRJ 700 and a, another 737 that was heading its way to Chicago. We're departing first. Uh, we were only about uh, 20 minutes late as we are sitting um, right outside of our gate that we pushed back. Um, as I discovered, uh, Star Wars The Force Awakens, I decided to watch that as my uh, in-flight movie. Um, since we were a little bit delayed, uh, by the time we landed, the movie was uh, over after the credits. Um, as this would be a 2 hour and 35 minute flight. Uh, we did arrive just about a couple minutes early um, in Fort Lauderdale. Uh, I was in my jeans and everything, it was extremely warm. Um, and I was sweating really bad, but of course when George pulled up, I didn't have time to change So I had to suffer for a little bit um, I want to explain what was happening here uh, For takeoff. It was so bad. It was so turbulent um, As the storm system was heading right over Dulles That we had to fly almost towards Philadelphia to the north before we could uh, make our southern uh, turn towards uh, Florida as we finally lined up on runway one right and air traffic control basically told us to get the hell out of here uh, which we did so three two one here we go toga power on the 737-800 um, as I was watching Star Wars The Force Awakens uh, I got to the theme where um, Ray, one of the characters from The Force Awakens uh, was, was uh, scattering parts as uh, a special song in the um, and the soundtrack called Ray's Theme, which is one of my favorite soundtracks of Star Wars, was playing in the middle of this takeoff, which made an absolute um, stunning scenery. Um, it made the whole scene of takeoff look very much alive. Um, we were doing about uh, an M1 thrust of 102%, um, as I was really, um, like, I said, it was, like I said before, it was really turbulent. As you can see already, we're dealing with the turbulence here. Um, right after takeoff, uh, but uh, we had an amazing crew today, um, and so yeah, you can see the zero gravity effect was uh, really live today. As I was pretty much on the edge of my seat, trying to hold on for dear life. Um, the worst part about flying for me is that zero gravity effect, and you'll mainly get it on 737s. Um, basically, just the design. Um, the only aircrafts I've flown in my life. Our CRJ 200s, 700s, uh, Airbus A319s, 20s, and 330s and 340s, uh, as well as all types of 737s except for uh, five, three, and two classics. So, I've, um, and the 700s, I'm not flying for United, but I have flown for Southwest. Um, and then Boeing 757-200, which I took as my first um, kind of narrowish big body um, I've ever flown. Um, but yeah, the 737s are notorious for having that zero gravity effect, which I really hate. Um, but once we got over the Potomac River, um, as I got turbulence, I don't mind the turbulence because I know what that is. Um, it's just that zero gravity effect I don't like. Uh, with turbulence, I don't get this much. I just get the whole aircraft just shaking left to right. Eventually, you'll you'll drop like maybe 50 feet uh, from the sky, or it'll, the air pressure on the outside of the aircraft will. Uh, raises as well as the uh, the winds and the uh, turbulence clouds that will uh, push the aircraft so I'm going to go ahead and shut up let you enjoy the scenery for a little bit as uh, we're about to go into the clouds here and uh, come on with more commentary what's going on and the plans I might have a couple pictures to show 
uh, through, but uh, I do have a surprise in the middle on the way back home or on the way to the uh, airport going home. I do have one special surprise that I'll list at the, uh, in the towards the middle of the video. So in the meanwhile, enjoy the rest of the uh, departure.
So I have a little bit extra information about this flight. Um, using my United flight benefits, uh, courtesy of United Airlines, um, the company I currently work for, this is my 20th flight um, using my flight benefits. On November 12th, 2019, the um, Olive flying United. Uh, the flight was 1785. We're going from Washington Dells to Fort Lauderdale nonstop. Um, I'm in row 11. Uh, seat Foxtrot, so 11 Foxtrot, uh, which is basically the uh, first officer side of the plane, or if you're looking towards the front of the aircraft, is on the right side, um, as I'm sitting in Economy Plus. We departed Washington, Dulles at 8.30, which was 30 minutes late, and we actually arrived at Fort Lauderdale at 11.02, which was uh, 4 minutes late. Our aircraft was a Boeing 737-824. If you are a frequent flyer of United, you might know some aircraft numbers, but this aircraft is number 3228, and the registration was November 14228. We departed Washington, Dallas at a gate to Charlie 4, and we arrived at Fort Lauderdale at gate Charlie 3. We are supposed to arrive at Charlie 1, um, but there's another aircraft that was trying to go to Houston that was um, very delayed by three hours due to a... Um, the tornado that was going through uh, Texas at the time. Uh, we depart on runway 1 right and then we uh, arrived on runway 10 left as we paced an American 737-800 that was arriving on 10 right which you'll see at the end of this, um, this section of the video where we land here in Fort Lauderdale. Our cruising altitude was 38,000 feet uh, but due to the, um, the heavy weather that was below us and the turbulence um, that was in the atmosphere. We had to play around until we could find the right altitude. Um, our TV screens were showing that we were at 41,000 feet. However, flight radar indicated that we were at 38,000 feet. So I used that instead. Um, but just in case we were, um, the captain said we were about 38, 39,000 feet. Um, uh, so the computers must have been wrong. But uh, we'll say 38,000 feet. And then our highest speed we were at was 481 knots for cruising speed. Um, or actually our highest speed, our cruising speed was 454 knots. Um, as we start to make our approach into Florida, I have a couple cool uh, sceneries. We flew right over West Palm Beach. Um, as you can see here, where my buddy is staying. So basically at this time he's doing some homework, getting out of his, uh, one of his classes, his only class of the day. Uh, to fly, uh, not fly, to drive down to Fort Lauderdale from West Palm to come get me as um, I spent the weekend with him. Um, big shout out to GMN's boss for his hospitality and introduced me to a Brazilian steakhouse, which I will absolutely come back here uh, to Florida just to try it out. I'll have some news about Florida at the end of the video. Uh, this is not confirmed yet, uh, but this is just a heads up and what's going on with my life. It, it does have something to do with Florida, uh, which I'll come back at the end of this uh, video to let you know what's going on. In the meantime, enjoy the rest of the approach. My favorite part is coming up, um, where it's just the, uh, there's just a big little uh, levee that separates uh, civilian from farmlands, and um, you'll obviously see it here in the next few minutes. You can't, you cannot possibly miss it.
After a wonderful flight and watching Star Wars The Force Awakens for the first time ever, I finally landed in Fort Lauderdale. The second United aircraft that's at Charlie 3 is what we just flew on. The aircraft in front of us is what was occupying our gate, which forced us to go to the gate next door. Uh, so here's the couple pictures I got in Fort Lauderdale. So the first one, uh, we're right next to the, uh, the cruise terminal, and I felt like getting on a cruise. And then this one is just uh, George taking my picture with the uh, weird beach glasses, I guess from the 70s. We were in some 70s surf shop. And then the beach that we were at was just crystal clear blue. It was just warm. It was wonderful. It was a nice evening to walk. And then I got a couple pictures of the sunset here in uh, West Palm Beach as we we're going over the little, uh, uh, not the viaduct, it's like a little uh, river. Here's another picture as we we're cruising down his Mustang as we head back to uh, get ready to go to a Brazilian steakhouse. Um, that's pretty much what we did all, that, uh, all day. We just hung out around this uh, hotel and all that stuff. Uh, big shout out to G-Man's boss here, my buddy George, uh, my brother. Um, really took care of me. And then these cool little signs that are around the river crossings that I saw, so I had to take pictures of them. And then uh, we had a little storm as I was walking towards the um, train station to get on my bright line to go back to Fort Lauderdale now inside the station um, it's really really nice um, this is just the they had a cute little gift shop um, I wrote bright line orange but I didn't know I was writing the orange so I just got a regular uh, hat and shirt as we um, as I board bright line so just a little taste as I was uh, on my way walking up towards the station uh, the train before mine was just departing and I thought I'd get a nice uh, video of it passing just because I haven't gotten a video of my mind yet, so I figured this would be my uh, first. As soon as the train passed me, I knew that um, it, was, it was going to be a really good ride. Um, just how clean it looked, just how uh, sleek. The special designs of the uh, Siemens SCB-40 chargers um, that these four coaches being pulled by. Uh, which these trains could do 125 miles an hour, but the section that will do 125 miles an hour between West Palm and Orlando is currently under construction. It will be done here in the next couple years. Um, that's our status board, and our train was next. Um, I got there a little bit early, uh, just because I never rode Brightline before. Um, see, there's my ticket from West Palm Beach to Fort Lauderdale. is only $15 uh, just for the coach, and then for um, which was it's Smart Class. And then for a select class, which is like their business or first class, it was about $25. So it was pretty good. And then they have a little bar and all that stuff. And literally, the trains just passed right under you in the waiting lounge. Um, I was by the kids area because the window was right there. So here's uh, FEC train number 201, which is like a mix of everything for uh, Autorax, Intermodals, uh, Manifest, and Rock. As I'll let you enjoy that here for a second.
As soon as FEC 202's uh, tail end cleared, I looked out the other window. I didn't catch on fi uh, film, but our train was arriving on the other track, which was uh, Brightline Orange. This is the interior of Brightline. In my opinion, it looks so much better than the Acel Express. It makes the Acel Express look like crap. So, uh, this is the interior. This is the seat I was in. It has a double tray table. One for like your phone, one for uh, your food and stuff. Uh, it comes with four USB outlets and four regular outlets. Uh, to charge your laptops and all that stuff while you're on the train. The top speed we reached on the train was 79 miles an hour and we were being pulled by an SCB Siemens 40 charger. Uh, I believe the uh, locomotive was number 106. Um, these are the bullet version of the SC44 chargers. Uh, the only difference is that they're bullet like. Uh, they can take a little more power. Uh, they weigh just a little bit lighter. Uh, they can still go 125 miles an hour, but they're only 4,000 horsepower compared to the uh, SC44s, which are 4,400 horsepower. Um, the tracks that we're on are qualified to do 125 miles now automatically, but uh, due to city Bright limits, Please take a that we're only to um, authorized to do 100, or, sorry, 79 pocket. miles an hour. Uh, but we took off from the station immediately. Where I filmed that first Brightline well train was right here at that signal. Um, as you can see, there is a uh, uh, Palm Beach Atlantic University where G-Man's box attends. As I said, my final goodbyes and wave to him one last time. As we are on our way down to Fort Lauderdale, southbound at a high. Bye, George.
FEC equipment defect detector milepost 309.0 West track no defects no defects end of transmission You hear throughout this video, pretty much it's a quiet zone all the way from West Palm Beach going down to Fort Lauderdale. South of Fort Lauderdale, I don't know uh, what the zones are like. Uh, I do know that they do blow the horn uh, every so often past Fort Lauderdale. The only time you hear the horn blown uh, between West Palm and Lauderdale is uh, when Brightline is approaching another train or if there's uh, maintenance or they are. Um, told by the dispatch to go ahead and blow the horn or any train orders. Um, we did get a report um, as soon as I got on the train that um, there was a bright line before us that uh, hit somebody uh, just right outside Miami. Um, they did investigate it and put the train on their way. Uh, this is why I'm uh, very serious when it comes to train safety and I try to uh, educate and help everybody out who's around tracks. Unfortunately due to natural selection it doesn't work. And no matter how many, how many tickets the police give out or you know how many people they arrest for trespassing and fine, it doesn't work. Um, so again, my message is very clear. Uh, don't try to beat the train. Um, nine out of ten times, you cannot judge the speed of the train. Um, especially, it doesn't matter how fast you, uh, you'll go or the train will go. You know, like it, they can still hurt and they can kill you. Um, I could show you many examples, I could go on and on about stories about that, but I don't want to do that in this video, as I want to try to keep it happy and crisp. So, uh, my message is clear, don't trespass, don't do anything illegal, don't uh, try to beat the train at all. If you see tracks, always think train. Uh, just because the gates are up doesn't mean there will always uh, be a train uh, there, because a lot of times it can happen. I've seen it happen where trains just come up to great crossings and the crossings aren't down. Um, and all that uh, good stuff. So again, uh, I'm going to say this for a third time. The message is clear. Sea uh, tracks, think train. Always think about railroad safety um, around the tracks. And uh, don't find anything stupid. Uh, don't trespass. Don't try to beat the train. Don't try to cut your time just because uh, it's convenient for you. As it could be the last time you try to cut, uh, cut your time. That's, that's all I'm going to say about that.
equipment defect detector. Mile post three three zero. West track. No defects. No defects. Total axle two four. End of transmission. prepare for our arrival into the Fort Lauderdale station and attendant will pass by to discard any remaining service items from your trip. We ask that you please be mindful of those guests boarding and joining us on our trip to Miami. For those guests who will not be joining us, we thank you for riding Brightline and have a great day. I want to give another big shout out to Brightline uh, for providing excellent five-star service. Not once during my little trip uh, between West Palm Beach and Fort Lauderdale was I dissatisfied at all. As a matter of fact, I was talking to a train attendant because about a year ago I applied for Brightline as nobody has reviewed my application. As he just told me that they are always uh, desperate for locomotive engineers and uh, train conductors uh, as a lot of them were leaving uh, due to uh, either them having PTSD or they didn't like uh, the way things were ran. I thought the operation of Brightline was very successful. Um, sorry, I just wanted to stop and look at the door. So here's this train uh, that I was talking about that I was pulling into Fort Lauderdale. Uh, look at the rear locomotive and uh, look at the nose real fast. And this is why I talk about train safety and want to come back to this uh, point real fast. Because um, if you're not safe around trains and you just don't care about your surroundings, this is what will happen to you and this is what you'll do to a locomotive. Oh, that one hit somebody. So that train hit someone this morning. Anyways, enough of that. I think I made my point very, very clear. Um, as soon as I got on the plane, it started raining. Um, the worst part about coming into the airport was that I had to put my jeans back on, knowing it was going to be cold back in Virginia. As we made an early departure, as we left the gate around five minutes early, uh, as everybody was on board. Um, I was shown that this was going to be a full flight. First, I want to show the TV real fast. Um, Thanks to a friend of mine for reminding me about that. Uh, so, United is operated by DirecTV, so that's your little remote that's in your uh, hand rest. I find it very handy. However, I would prefer to have a, either a touch screen or a remote that will actually come out of the seat. Uh, as we lined up for runway 10 left, as we did for the uh, arrival, now we're departing on the same runway as we are all lined up, uh, waiting to go. Because we're departing early, I decided to watch uh, Star Wars The uh, Force Awakens again because I just fell in love with the movie after my flight in. Uh, as soon as we were taking off, the Star Wars scene was just coming on as we went ahead and togged um, all the way out as we uh, depart here at Fort Lauderdale. So I'm not going to say much about this. Um, as soon as we get to cruising altitude, I'll give you the uh, aircraft and the uh, 
flight information here. But go ahead and enjoy this uh, scenic takeoff as I get my last whiff, um, whiff of the beach and the air life before we went into the aircraft uh, cabin pressurization mode.
Since I started with the airline industry, this has been my 21st flight using my flight benefits. I want to give a big shout out uh, to United Airlines once again for uh, letting me have these uh, benefits as I try to do my best um, in service to make sure all of our flights go out. Um, I want to talk about my ramp job for a second. If anybody is looking for a job, uh, especially in the airline industry, um, my personal opinion, United Airlines is the best airlines to work for. Uh, so far, I don't work for a contractor. I, uh, my personal opinion is work directly for the airline uh, because of the benefits, the great work. Uh, everybody's fantastic. The management is just wonderful, very professional, uh, very friendly. Um, I know a few of my friends who already made friends with uh, uh, the management just because it's just they're just so cool and they're so fun to hang around with um, and all that. So I hope to have a really, 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 really long and wonderful career with United Airlines, um, even though I made transfer. So I'll get to that point at the end of the video. So we're on United Flight 315, which is a daily service from Fort Lauderdale to Washington, Dallas. I was in row 21A, which was an emergency exit. I had the whole road to myself, so I was in 21 Alpha on this uh, Boeing 737, yet again, 824 series. We're in aircraft number 3222. Uh, the registration of the plane was uh, November 34222. We left this time at gate Charlie 1, um, because Charlie 3 is occupied by another delayed flight. And then our arrival into uh, Dulles was going to be at gate Charlie 19. Um, but due to another aircraft issue, we had to go to gate Delta 15, which was right at the mobile lounge. Uh, we depart Fort Lauderdale on uh, runway 10 left as we did arrival. And then we arrived into Dulles on runway 19 left. So they did a wind change on us, so we had to go around. As you can see, there's Dulles International Airport um, on the screen right now. Our cruising altitude was uh, non-negotiable, uh, but we were at 37,000 feet. And our highest speed was 505 knots as we highballed all the way home. See what I did there? If you didn't, well, sorry, I'm not going to explain it. Um, but our, our, just our regular cruising altitude uh, was pretty much at 475 knots. Uh, like I said, our highest uh, speed was 505 knots. Um, whereas we leveled off at 37,000 feet. Uh, this has been an amazing uh, little vacation. I worked non-stop for straight two weeks, uh, doing uh, 10 hours a day, pretty much, as an average. Um, yeah, this was worth a little weekend vacation down in Florida. Um, I want to give a big shout out to Brightline for their amazing service. United Airlines for all they've done for me. And um, just because the work there is amazing. I love my job as a ramp agent at Washington Dulles. And to my buddy J-Man's boss for making all of my trip happen by picking me up and taking me on a little tour and just just having an amazing vacation, you know. It was just just amazing and I can't wait to do it again. Can't wait to see you up here, buddy, uh, for Thanksgiving and uh, we'll have to do this again. Um, so my little announcement here is that I may be transferring down to Fort Lauderdale. Um, my family may be moving to Oklahoma. And uh, because United does not serve Tulsa on the ground, um, that means I would have to change jobs to work the ramp in Tulsa, which I don't want to do. Uh, that will basically be me going back to Swissport, which that's a big no-no. I want to keep uh, working for United. Um, so the best suitable for me to be able to live somewhere is uh, Fort Lauderdale. And uh, I want to thank uh, a special friend of mine, um, I won't mention him right now um, because I don't know if these plans are 100% active or foolproof, so I'm going to hold off on that, uh, but I may have a place to go, so I may have to move down to Florida, down to Fort Lauderdale. Uh, more updates will be coming on that soon um, and all that. So yes, this will be the end of the video as we are making our final turn coming back into Dulles. When I left Fort Lauderdale, it was 85 degrees, I was in my shorts, and then my mother called me to remind me to put on my long pants, as she told me it was very cold up here, in which she was right. As soon as we landed, the captain announced that it was 34 degrees with wind chills of 27. I thought he misread it, so I went up into the cockpit when we landed and asked him what the real temperature was. He said, go out and see for yourself. As I stuck my hand through the jet bridge, 
He was not lying. As a matter of fact, it felt way colder than that. Well, that's because I was just coming from shorts, sandals, and t-shirts. Actually, not even a t-shirt. So, yes, as we make our final approach, I want to say thank you all for um, subscribing. Thank you all for watching this video. And if you have not subscribed, uh, go ahead and hit that subscribe for me, as I will always subscribe back. I, I look at my list at least a couple times a month. Go ahead and like this video to show that you support my content. Um, and go ahead and comment below if you have any comments, questions, um, or maybe answers that I have maybe had during this um, uh, this video. And maybe some suggestions for my next video so I can do some little editing and some uh, updates. As well as um, improve on my future videos if I do have any. If YouTube does not demonetize me or does anything stupid. As we all know YouTube is doing stupid stuff uh, these days with uh, the child protection child uh, protection scene and the privacy acts and all that stuff which is screwing all of YouTube as well as the advertisements that YouTube keeps bringing up which very much annoys me somebody reported to me that on one of my videos I had three advertisements just at the beginning and would not let him play the um, one of my videos if you guys have any issues with that please let me know um, I know I won't be able to do much with YouTube but at least you can let me know see what's going on um, and maybe I can um, maybe I can fix it maybe not I don't know um, but if this continues to happen I will have to quit YouTube uh, but I will have alternatives so stay tuned for that as well um, if any of this stuff keeps happening so then this is Trans Productions enjoy the rest of the landing I'm gonna stop uh, talking now shut up and go to bed good night everybody see you around
behalf of the entire United Team and our Star Alliance partners, thank you for choosing to fly with us today. We truly appreciate your business and we hope you enjoyed your flight.